are you bored tired that burnout feeling while trying to find space in the wordpress ecosystem now this is real and happens to a lot of professionals but unfortunately rarely gets talked about now if you're feeling the heat of not achieving enough or not earning enough in the wordpress ecosystem this is the topic this is the episode you need to hear david decker shares his story of wordpress burnout aka that feeling i want to throw it all away so let's welcome david on the show and get started hi david how are you hi i'm very good i'm doing fine very busy but really it's really going well for me <laughs> awesome so before we discuss that burnout phase that you went into while doing the wordpress stuff why don't you give a quick introduction about your online life like what you've been doing in this online world for last 5 10 15 20 years yes i'm in the web business for nearly 20 years i started in the year 2000 mm-hmm. as a side business while studying at the university and i was doing the simple basic html websites i even used frames <laughs> i'm guilty of that but in 2006 i started with wordpress i had uh, explored wordpress a year before and i couldn't install it but then in 2006 i was able and successful and i built my first site for non-profit organization and after that i made the decision only with wordpress and that is the story till today I'm doing sites with Genesis, with Elementor, with Astra themes, with all those kind of tools and um which I'm working with and I'm doing sites especially in Germany for German clients and maintenance and migration work. So that is my my WordPress kind of business. For the start, can you share about WordPress crisis that happened in your professional life of building things in the WordPress ecosystem? Yes, absolutely. I it was about the year 2014, 2015 and this was when I was 14, 15 years in business with my with my own business on my own and I I felt so tired and I felt so burn out and i felt the stress i didn't want to talk with clients and uh taking the phone this was horrible for me i i was not motivated at all and when i did see a wordpress admin area i was like oh running away it it was just i was at the point i had enough of it so and i spoke to my wife one day in 2014 Okay, I close my company. I am searching for a job. I have enough of it. I don't want it anymore, but <laughs> I knew it was not possible to to give up because I had to care for my family. I I had to feed them and <laughs> it just had going on. It it had still be going on. So and I knew it it was not easy and it was it was hard for me in the day to day life but um at this time i also had um, another uh, kind of client which had nothing to do with the web business i was organizing events for them and stuff and so i had a little bit of an income at this time but in the midst of my crisis they came to me and said the contract is over also so that was that was a bit hard uh, it was not so much for the money because i still had clients i still had a bit of income but i was not motivated at all uh, to work with wordpress to do websites and to have a relationship and a communication with clients i was just after 15 years it was time for a break so So during that time was this also connected to financial goals like meaning the activities that you did with your you know clients in your agency did not bring enough money for survival or didn't reach the targets that you've set for yourself Yes kind kind of uh, I would you can always earn more money it's just a personal thing with which what kind uh, which what amount of money you are satisfied which is enough for your family so i have always the dream to make bigger numbers and more clients and more income but 
a day has only so so many hours. You can only do so much at a day, not not more. And and this, so I, it was clear that this was this was not possible to reach. I had to make my normal business, which which I had, and I kind of uh, did crew every year, and I did raise my my rates every year and the prices every year. That that I learned along the way in the in this kind of 15 years mm -hmm. doing this, but it was just like the the communication, the actual actual work to to do another new site, to do another migration. I was so it was just stress for me. I had a fear of taking the phone. I didn't want to speak with a client, and normally I loved it. Also training uh, clients, I, I loved it, but. Then I then I hated it and the finances also a bit. I would have dreamed to uh, to have more monthly income, more regular. So in, if you have your own business, it's, it depends. One month you have nothing, and the next two months you have a lot. But you have also um, expenses like you have to sometimes uh, buy a new computer, which was also at the end of 2014. I needed a new one because the old one was broken. So, but I had a, a relationship with a client which I ended and this client uh, owed me money still. And I was able with my lawyer to get the money back and, and to end this relationship. Well, it, it was a happy end. So I had the money for this year, end of 2014 and was able to buy a new computer. And so at the end, it was, it was like, a, like a happy end. And, I, I stayed in the business and I did, be, uh, so I did not like the, the work and the communication with clients, but I had no other alternative at this time. And uh, three months later in the spring of 2015, I got a call from a friend and he said, oh, David, I worked at this company, but I, I have another project. I want to leave this company. Can you fill my job? at this company and I said, okay, this sounds, this sounds amazing. This is just what I needed. And so I started in early 2015 at this company with a, with a contract and they tested me and later the, the boss was really happy and he phoned me in summer of 2015, David, do you want to work full time for us? So I was like, okay, <laughs> I do this, of course, <laughs> it um, was amazing. Now, was getting the job at that time was kind of a quick escape from your WordPress crisis in your professional life? Now, when you look back, I guess you will feel it like that? Um, yes. All but, lucky things happening at the right place, right time. It, it, for the first moment, it felt that way, so that all problems were, uh, would be solved. But... Later on at this new job, uh, the boss came, oh, David, you have a history in web websites <laughs> making. <laughs> so can you can you make our website with WordPress? They had a proprietary system and it was coded from another former staff member. So please transform this to WordPress. And I was like, so, okay, I wanted to leave this behind. So, but now I, I still had to make it, but it was, it was different circumstances and those different circumstances helped me. I got clear, I got clear tasks to fulfill. I had a designer and uh, the, um, another staff member in the company who was more of a designer and he said, okay, David, make it so, make it so. And I could focus more on the um, essential WordPress uh, admin and back-end system. So not so much the front-end. This was done by other people. So and this this was like, okay, I didn't have to communicate with the client. I didn't have to phone with the client. It was my, my company. I was a member of the team. So it was completely different. I did, that helped me to, to take a different perspective, a different angle on the whole WordPress thing. And, and it was it. And while you were doing this job, I guess your agency was still running in the background, right? You were still uh, yes. maintaining the websites of your existing clients, right? Exactly. I, I, with you, I did not take any heavy heart. <laughs> yes, and I, uh, a few clients I did let go, and so I kept 
the, the best ones and the closest. I have some friends and so the best ones. And you mentioned that I didn't want to pick up the phone during those crisis period and during those days. So were you, uh, all your clients at that time were like all local within Germany and they would call you for support or something that's broken rather than emailing you? Um, yes, both kind of. But in, in Germany and in the area where I live and my kind of clients, Mm-hmm. They like to have a, they like to have a phone call. They are used to it, and this is the this is the common thing here. So I have a lot of clients in the nonprofit area. I have churches. I have small organizations, small companies, uh, maybe a two uh, two person company or five uh, five people a company, and so. These small companies, they don't have the time to care about websites. So they want to have a person they can trust. So they want to hear my voice. They want to see me. I visit normally. I visit them one time at least, or we have a a Skype conversation or something like that. So they, okay, this is the guy who makes our website and then they are happy and then I can start with them. And that phone phone culture thing still exists? Like you still... Uh, get client calls or now things have changed a little? Uh, a little bit. It's It was email still all the, all the time also uh, via email because they sent me the files and stuff. That was all, always like that also 15 years ago. But the, the phone calls still still exist. It's, it's still normal and still common over here. And as of now, you're still running the agency and you're still doing the full-time job, right? Um, n- no, I changed um, the full-time job ended in uh, early 2018. So the okay. company was restructuring and it was coming to an end. And in the company were also some problems because they had no internal documentation. It was really hard to get information about all the technical APIs and stuff they, they used. Mm-hmm. And, um, I had to take over the support, the leadership of the support in this company, which was really a learning experience for me. And I managed it, but it was really hard. Uh, A little bit of support, uh, this is okay for me, but not full-time only support all the day. So it was okay. And then one of my longest running clients, about 20 years, I am in a relationship with this client. And he said, okay, David, I have so many work to do so much work to do can you can you help me can we make a, a better contract so you can more work exclusively for us and i said okay we can do that and i asked can you employ me can i be a member of your company and he said okay i have to think about it it was like in two days we arranged it and so i was working for this company the, the, the old company ended end of January and first day of February, I was working for the next company. So it was like amazing, total surprise. And and I managed to um, negotiate that I work only three days for the company, three days of the week and two days I have time for my business and plug in work and stuff like that. So that is really important for me that I have again more time for my business but I also have a financial security a bit more. I have regular income and can uh, go from that point. And now if you, you know, circle back to your crisis days, now did you feel the option of getting someone, you know, a developer or a designer or a WordPress person in your ecosystem to help you out with the things or like they were like, that wasn't an option due to money issues and all that stuff? Um, I, I always thought about that, but it's very hard in, in Germany to employ someone. You need a really high amount of money to uh, meet all the regulations, the financial regulations and all the legal stuff you have to to cope with. And so if I want to employ someone, I want to make it right, not, uh, not half-baked. So that was always important for me. And uh, I also um, spoke with a close friend. He is also in the online business, but not WordPress, but we work together with WordPress uh, sites, but he has uh, another focus. He does uh, publishing work for magazines and stuff like that, and he makes books. 
and we work together with WordPress. And he has a very good business background, and he is longer in business than me. And he gave me great tips, and I learned a lot from them. And he uh, he said I have to um, change my way of communicating with clients, and I have to make more a stand. Which what what are my <laughs> what are my values, and I don't go back on these values. I, I stand on these values and don't uh, don't go back. You know, you talk about the general WordPress ecosystem, the not so, you know, the mental pressure of clients, which obviously gets blamed to WordPress yes. ecosystem. Yes. <laughs> but, you know, within WordPress ecosystem, also we have a lot of smaller ecosystem. Like I can give you my example. Like when I started, I used general official WordPress themes. Then I started using Revolution theme from Brian Gardner and then went to Genesis. And I stayed with Genesis for almost four, five years. And I never looked outside Genesis ecosystem during that time because I thought, oh, I'm using the best one. Obviously, Genesis is really good, but I am using the best one. And I never looked outside Genesis for almost like five years. And now when I look back, I think I did a mistake. Probably you should be more open-minded in you know, exploring things outside your ecosystem system and you never know you may find something more useful do you have a kind of similar story here yes kind of this sounds very similar to me i i was after um, starting working with wordpress exclusively i was starting the search for the right uh, scene i i tried a lot of uh, i tried hybrid scenes from justin tedlock they were were really good but they changed a lot of and this was nothing for me i needed a stable system so i i was uh, exploring prime gardner's uh, themes and genesis was born in 2010 and i made the decision uh, such a framework could help me because it's always the same it's super stable and the child team on top of it is like a skin, like a design skin. And this was for my way of thinking and for my way of doing things, it was a total perfect fit for me. So I really invested in Genesis and uh, all sites I started more were with Genesis and I migrated some old ones to Genesis and I dived into the code of Genesis and I learned to know... Uh, <laughs> Got, got to know so many new people in the Genesis community. It's, it's still, it's like a family. It's like a family within WordPress. Uh, in the whole WordPress universe, you have a sub-community or a special family. It's called Genesis. It's all also a bit going beyond WordPress because uh, in USA, there are a lot of agencies working with Genesis exclusively. It's a bit different than in Germany. Um, but I was really overwhelmed. But as you said, um, sometimes you have to uh, to look over the yeah. <laughs> over and the you know, after Genesis, I discovered the Beaver Builder ecosystem, and I really yes. felt good. And I'm sure you went with Elementary ecosystem, and I'm sure you're using it and you're loving it. So that jumping of ecosystem happens really. Uh, I think frequent now because a lot of people are innovating and producing more innovative products here and there are more options available as of now. Um, kind of, but a, a bit different. I would not say switching ecosystems is the thing. For me, it's like living together or living side by side. So uh, for my personal story, it's I'm still working with Genesis. I have a lot of old sites I have to maintain that are staying on it's Genesis. Yes. Same here, like I have a lot of, and they don't break. <laughs> yes, it's just no reason to migrate them because clients would not pay me for this. And they work also perfect with Elemental Genesis and Elemental works uh, very good together for the normal way. And if you want to special stuff, you maybe have to make a little tweak or something like that, but it's it's no issue at all. But uh, it's more for the for the spirit, for for my personal inspiration and for my professional inspiration. I wanted to, to look beyond Genesis. And uh, this was just, uh, with my crisis, I was not working so much with WordPress uh, during uh, a time of three years, about three years. I was working only a little bit with WordPress, uh, only uh, almost no coding 
uh, stuff and, and nothing like that. And after the end of this time, of this period, I was like, okay, what's, what's happening in WordPress? I, I felt like all things have changed. All, all things have grown. Uh, there was an Elementor. There was Beaver Builder was really more advanced at this time. Um, and so, so many things changed. And I was like, okay, Genesis looks a bit dated. I have to try new things. And I explored the Astro theme, the Generate Press uh, theme. I, I knew the names before, like Generate Press, but I was not really looking at it. I was so into Genesis that I forgot there are other things. And now, and now it's all together. Now I use Genesis a bit for, for special stuff, Astra for special stuff. And so an Elementor comes into place where it's needed and it's working with all these things. So I'm, my, I growed my toolbox and made it bigger and this made my joy with WordPress a lot more. I have more joy now working with WordPress and it, it feels fresh and it's, uh, it's a fresh inspiration for me. Now, I believe you've made almost 42 plugins out of which 25 WordPress oh, plugins. Yes. <laughs> Now, how did your passion for plugging making change with your changes in more or less love of what WordPress ecosystem was throwing at you? Like if you see your plugin journey vis-a-vis -vis your crisis days with regard to WordPress and agency clients to, you know, getting a job and now juggling both the things. Yes, the, I forgot this when we talked about the crisis. The, the, my plugin work was deeply connected with the crisis. So I had... Uh, I did so many plugins in the first two or three years when I started coding plugins. So it was such a passion. I was so I had so joy with it. It was was so great. And then came the big <laughs> the big failure. I would I would say the big the big burnout. So when when I did get a support question, I was like, oh, I I don't I don't want to answer. I ju I just don't want it. I, I don't care for this user. So it was like, it's really not good to, to say this or feel this or even think this, but it was the reality at this point in time for me, like uh, five, six years ago. Um, and I, I'm guilty of that. I'm, I sh I'm ashamed for this because this is not the way you should uh, handle your users or care with your users. But it was the reality. I was starting too fast and I did too much plugins at the, at the time. So I was like in 2015 when I started the job, I uh, sent an email to WordPress plugin team and I said those kind of uh, 14 plugins or so, please close it. Those were the plugins that was the, the most complicated, had the less users and the most bad re reviews and the most um, most issues. But one of it was really successful and I had to close it because it was starting to have legal issues uh, in German because it was a language translation plugin for WooCommerce to make it completely Germanized, the language. But the, the users uh, had expectations what the plugin should do in the legal space and the that the plugin could not do, so I had also to close it down. And really, the users were really upset, but I had no chance because I'm a single person business. I was doing that in my spare time, and it was this kind of plugin business was eating me up. It was eating my time, it was eating my passion, all of me. And this uh, made my crisis happen a lot quicker than it would and happen without the plugins. All your plugins were free or did you even offer any paid or pro? Yes, uh, all plugins were free because it were, were mostly uh, smaller, uh, simpler plugins, more, okay. more simple, more, more small, small helper plugins for Genesis or for little tweaks in WordPress here and there. And um, I always thought of monetizing them Mm -hmm. Or a, a few, a few of them. But yes, I, I'm really struggling with with this kind of question until today because I want to do it right. It has to be a system where, which is easy to manage. I don't have the time to manage a store or set up a, a store with easy digital downloads or WooCommerce. This 
I don't have the time to manage this. I, I want to use a system which, which works for me, maybe Freemius or other systems. And with one of my current plugins, it's, it has an add-on model. And this is the kind of plugin I have plans to monetize, but I'm in it for the long run. So I make no stress. I have time. I, I take more time and be more relaxed with it. So that makes more sense now. So what is your current status vis-a-vis your plugins? Like, are you excited, pumped to manage those or they are still there? Like they are there, right? Um, yes, it's, it's, it's still a lot of work, but I, I tried to, um, to manage the coding work in such a way that I can reuse a lot of code uh, blocks, blocks of code I, uh, that appear in some of my plugins, so it's easier to manage for me. Mm-hmm. Um, and I have a clear vision what I make into a plugin and what not, so the features ha- I have a clear vision for. So it's not overwhelming for me. And the plugins help me to understand WordPress better and to keep with the pace of WordPress. So I have to make tweaks for new WordPress versions. I have to make tweaks to be compatible with uh, themes and other plugins. And this helps me to stay uh, to stay uh, focused on the, on the way WordPress is going. And it, it helped me after my... Uh, after my crisis break and my less time with WordPress, the starting again with coding plugins helped me so much to uh, to get reconnected to WordPress, where WordPress is now, and learn the Elementor community and developers from them, and it it really helped me to to skyrocket again at the at the current level of uh, WordPress. Okay, now looking back on your burnout and wanting to quit the WordPress ecosystem. Now, yes. you have done something different to avoid this completely. Like now you look back and, and say, Oh, I should have done that. And I wouldn't have been hot mess. Yes. I have um, changed a lot. Uh, what I do with, with my clients, how I um, how I speak with them, the, the business, the business things. Not so much the WordPress things. This is this is always uh, the easiest uh, thing to communicate with them because I, I live I live in WordPress. I live with WordPress, so that that is not my uh, not my issue. My issue always were the business things. How to run a business? How to make it right? Because I'm not born as a businessman. I had to learn this all by trial and error. <laughs> I was uh, studying uh, history and politics and a bit of uh, business administration. So there was not there was no kind of course or lecture how to run a business. So I learned it by myself. I'm also an autodidact with WordPress, but I changed how I. The values I communicate with clients, how I speak, how I speak about what I can do for them and what they can do for me. Like a lot of clients are not interested in giving me their their content, their images, their files, and stuff mm-hmm. like that. They have no time for it and they hate it. But if they don't bring it to me, I won't work for them. So it's clear and clear and simple it, it may sound hard but it, it helps a lot so i have changed this kind of communication and i changed the the phone communication as well we can have a great talk on the phone but i determine when this will be and how long so the client has no right to talk two hours to me on the phone and steal my time i i make the rules uh, when I have time for such a kind of communication. And this, this helps uh, the client because the client uh, knows a, a lot how, um, how it goes. He knows the rules and how is it like me. And so it's clear structure and for me as well. And I changed also what I offering. I am uh, going more in the maintenance and migration uh, services with my with my business. Okay. I also do new new websites for small organizations and stuff, and even small companies, but not so like uh, 
five years ago or seven years ago. Okay, now someone going through a similar downtime, trying to build a professional life within WordPress ecosystem and struggling, what would be your advice to that person? Yes, the advice uh, would be really clear. Make more breaks. Uh, don't wait 15 years for a, <laughs> for a big change. Uh, go like every three years or every five years. Sit down with your wife or your family or with a close friend and have a talk. What's, what is in the next five years? What, what I want to work? For whom? Uh, which business, which company or whatever, or what, what's my own business, what I want to do. So maybe you have to make a big holiday for two months or whatever, or make a, a break and then start fresh with fresh inspiration or so this kind of thing. I was not having a break in my, in my business work. So, and I was not having a new inspiration. I was working with WordPress eight years without without any break, without any bigger change. And this was not good. You sometimes have to refocus. And the, the second thing is, I would say, have a clear structure with your clients, a clear communication. Uh, you are a business, you are on your own, you make the rules. And clients who don't want to follow these rules, then search for different clients. It, it sounds hard, <laughs> but uh, it still is, is friendly and sound because uh, you have you don't have to serve all clients. There are so many clients. The market is so big. You uh, take the time to find the right clients that are a good fit for you. So, and this is what what I also do. I raised my rates. I raised my prices for the services. And when doing this, a lot of clients that are really hard to manage won't even ask me because I'm too uh, too expensive for them. So the problem is solved at the, before it even appears. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and you mentioned like during your crisis uh, period, like you had a support of your wife and family members. But I guess now, yes. besides the family member, you can also have support of, you know, people who are into same business via Facebook groups and other communities. Like I have so yes. many friends who are actually friends and I can tell them my WordPress secrets and my problems and they can give me. And because when you share a problem with someone else, you get a different perspective of answer for that, you know, problem that you are facing now. Have you tried to build that ecosystem around now? I guess at during those days, we didn't have that kind of ecosystem. Uh, yes, uh, back at the time, it was, there wasn't such ecosystem. Yeah. It was kind of starting out. Yeah. And now you have so many podcasts and so many Facebook groups and uh, websites specializing in this kind of advice and this kind of uh, background information. But back in 2013, 14 or so, wasn't even kind, kind of such thing in a, in a broader way. Uh, I, I try to take a lot of this information, um, but for me, like how I'm structured personally and how my thinking is and how my weaknesses are, I have to be careful to be not overwhelmed by all the different information. So I have to make uh, investment in these groups and also take information and also give, give back to these communities, to these uh, Facebook groups, whatever. But I also have to make rules to, to invest not too much time. So that yeah. could be a problem for me if I have too much passion for a thing, invest too much time, then it could could be a, an, an issue. So, but overall, I'm quite happy about all the groups and communities and podcasts that are available that help us WordPress business people to, to keep growing, to get better in our uh, business kind of, how we do the business, right? how we uh, get better businessmen. I think this is, this is needed and I would also wish that on WordCamps or wherever, this kind of um, area gets more attention in my opinion. Yeah, usually don't, uh, you know, the most of the time it's the technical talk that gets most attention. Yes. 
Yes. <laughs> the human side of what we do doesn't get, you know, the, I think this is the first episode in my podcast that we, we are touching that side of, you know, WordPress ecosystem, even though the, the problems that you had did not actually relate to WordPress, but WordPress was in the mix. It was the base of everything. Yes, yes, so, exactly. Saying WordPress burnout, someone would say, no, it's not WordPress burnout, it's person burnout. But then you, that person is in the WordPress ecosystem and everything that he's building is based on WordPress. So your house is built on right. WordPress, right? So, and you feel the pain and then obviously you're going to say WordPress burnout. Yes, that was my kind of uh, word for it. It was my WordPress burnout because over 90% of what I worked, what I did all the day was deeply connected to WordPress. So uh, my my wife said, uh, it's your WordPress work. So for, for her, it was only WordPress. So she is not technical in, in any way. Uh, she, she is inspired and she really likes WordPress, but she is not, not a techie. She's just using it. She's blocking with it, stuff like that. She's only using it. So it was her perception, this is, WordPress work what you are doing and so this became for me even more clear that I had focused too much was too deep into it without a break and I made some mistakes with the business kind of things and stuff like that and all this together led to this burnout feeling that I was really hating it and I it was great for me to have a, a step back from WordPress and to make a different job for some years and and to have a, a different look now on WordPress. I I really have joy again and I like it. But it's 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 different also because I know of the dangers that that can happen. Awesome. Now let's shift gears and go to the usual yes. side of <laughs> discussions, which is your toolbox. So which are your current five favorite tools that power your online business? Um, yes, the, the first are easy. Uh, I would say it's it's WordPress, of course, then Elementor, okay. because that ha this has become a really great tool, which I use almost everywhere and on every site, and it helps a lot to that I can save time. Then I would say uh, one password. Uh, because it's my most used app on my on my computer. Mm -hmm. uh, when I when I when I switched to a password manager, this was a real. I was really happy. So one one more issue solved, and I have over thousand items in it. It's it's really needed for me. So two other tools. What what would I say? Um, I. I'm a browser guy. I use the Firefox browser, so I'm I'm using uh, Netscape, Mozilla, Firefox from the beginning. So I'm a Firefox guy, and it really it's it feels really great. It's like open source. I am I also use Google stuff and Chrome, but it's it's not my main browser at all. And I uh, with Firefox, I can with the same with WordPress, I can support the open web, the open source community. And I really, I feel really happy with that. So maybe these are four, four things. Um, I think it's, it's enough <laughs> that came to my mind. Okay. Currently. So which is a recommended web hosting service? Like what do you do use to host client website or recommend which web hosting to your clients who do not host with you? Um, um, I have a specialty with hosting services. I only use German, local German providers, because um, I do not the hosting. I, it's always the client who pays for the hosting. I only manage it for them. Okay. But I, it's the client. It belongs to the client. He pays for it. I, I don't, and I uh, take a provider. He's, it's called All Inkel. It's a, it's an English name, but it's a, <laughs> a German company, and I can. If I have an issue with the client side, I can phone them on Christmas Day in the night and I got uh, get a phone service. And this is really indispensable. I really need this. And I need this that I can say to my client, okay, this is the hosting company. It's located here in Germany because it's even more important for the GDPR because we yeah. all 
falling under the GDPR and it's really important to have the server location in Germany or within the European Union. So that is really important. That is the first question I get asked from the client. This has really switched in the, in the, in the last years. So I take only this, these kind of services. If I would not take a German provider, I would maybe take a WP Engine or a Sidecrown or, or, or Kinstar or Kinstar. Don't know how it's pronounced. Kinstar. Okay. Kinstar. okay. The next, the next question, I already know the answer, but I'll still ask you, which is your favorite page builder, Beaver, Elementor, yes. Thrive, TV? It's, it's Elementor, but I'm, you may be surprised. I'm also a paying uh, user of a Beaver Builder system. I, I bought it when it was released and it's still paying because I like the company and I like what they are doing. Yeah. My problem with Beaver always was in the first years, it was really slow to me at least. So maybe I, it, it was only me, but it never really clicked with me with the 1X version. Now with the 2.0 version, it's really, it's really great. But at this time I was all already in Elementor, yeah. so I made the decision, but both are great companies and Elementor switched the pro version to GPL this year. So now it's it's really good. And one of my clients is using the uh, Swive Architect. It's it's a great and innovative system, um, but I still like Elemental more because of the ecosystem. The ecosystem is just uh, unbeatable. Okay, any recommended email marketing service if you use one? Um, I currently use MailChimp, but I guess this will not always be the case. But in, for the moment, I'm... I have to confess, I'm, <laughs> I really started out with email marketing in the last year, so I'm really late on this, but I try to learn uh, with trial and error and make my way into it. So I, like I always do, I'm an autodidact, I have to make it myself. But I learned a lot from all you guys on the web. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, same here. Even I, you know, Facebook groups, you know, Twitter and yes. these conversations, actually you discover something new that may have not crossed your mind yet. And, you know, oh, this is the new service. So let's try. Let's everyone try. This is the new deal. Everyone hops on and try that tool. So that is what my last question is related to. So any upcoming tool or service that has caught your attention, I recently? Um not not so much uh, recently um, i am i have to say i am testing new plugins every day so every day it's one of my um, one hour or half an hour i check new plugins on the wordpress repository because i'm a plugin guy i have to know <laughs> what it's what it's released and uh, this is this is the most fun time of the day and i love it which um, plugin, which plugin one, did you find yesterday oh um, can't remember. There are so <laughs> there are so there are so many released yesterday and and um, today. Moment, I have I have a look and I can say you uh, there were released a lot of block plugins and one today was WP Audit and this uh -huh. plugin uh, scan all your short codes in your WordPress install and make you a list. This could be really helpful. I saw. And one of the recent plugins that really has skyrocketed is the uh, Rank Mass uh, SEO plugin. It's Rank Mass SEO. This is really skyrocketing. They have. Uh, yeah, they've, free, they've put everything in the free version. <laughs> <laughs> yes, exactly. But I, uh, but I heard from them they are even putting out a pro version sometime yeah. soon, maybe. They need to figure so out what's What's they going to add to the pro version? Yes, I'm wondering what, what's in the pro version. <laughs> but but it, uh, the, the interface is really great. And I, I integrated this in my Drupal was plugin. And I was really touched by this plugin. I, I really love what, what these guys are doing. It's, it's, not, um, it's not a cheap service. or It's one of the best interfaces of all the SEO plugins. And they have really... Uh, uh, think about this SEO stuff a lot. And I know from a lot of Elementor users from the communities, they love this plugin and it's really clicking with them, with the non-techies. So a lot of guys are disappointed from Yoast recently, 
not only because of the price increase. So I think it's a breath of fresh air and I love it when users have uh, more alternatives. That is always a good thing. Awesome. So before we wrap this episode, you can share where can people find you and what can you help people with? Yes, I can help people with one of my plugins, I, which I'm really proud of. It's called Toolbar Extras. And I mix this little admin bar or toolbar, no matter how you call it, it makes it more useful and helps you save some precious time in your mouse scrolling and searching for setting links, maybe for Elementor and other stuff. So, and you can find this plugin on WordPress.org, just search for Toolbar or on the website toolbarxplus.com. And my own website, it's in Germany, uh, it's in German and not updated in the last few months, but you can still find the information in German. This is deckerweb.de. Um, yes, and uh, also deckerweb on Twitter and on Facebook, but if you find me on wordpress.org in my toolbar plugin, then you can access all the links where you can reach me. So it's easy. Awesome. Thank you so much for sharing the part of, you know, our professional life, which most people do not yes. want to talk about or do not want to shed light on because we, <laughs> we don't feel comfortable about it. And, you know, no one wants to accept that I'm in pain or I'm a failure or yes. I'm not going through well, but I guess you are the brave one who did it. And I'm really happy, thankful to you. And before we end, do you want to say anything? <laughs> Yes, I just want to say thanks for having me and to have this conversation. And I'm kind of enjoying speaking about these things because I know that a lot of people are struggling with these kind of things. And I li like to speak about this so I can maybe help someone who, uh, who has these issues as well. So that is my, my goal to help people that, are, that say don't have those burned out years or burn out time so they make more breaks and think more about the business side of things not only the technical wordpress side of things so when i can do this with such an interview i'm really happy and i'm the most happy one and thanks again for having me and was really enjoying awesome thank you so much david have a good day yes thank you bye